Hello and welcome back. My name is Nathan House and I'm with the Church of Christ in Houston, California. And if you could like or subscribe to this video, that would be appreciated. Before you on the screen is what is an ancient manuscript, almost 2,000 years old, called P46. Contained in this manuscript, dated to the 3rd century, is Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1-11. through 11. And contained within these verses is the text we're going to look at today. We're not going to look at it on this manuscript but it's interesting to see that these biblical passages we're looking at, we have manuscript evidence that goes way back. And what it does is it gives us, it should give us, a lot of confidence in the text that we use today. This manuscript is, is very ancient. And when you compare it to the Bibles that we have in front of us, uh, very much the same. Our translations are going to do a very good job of translating this text. And so we're going to be looking at the Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. And this text on the screen actually is, contains Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. So the majority of what we look at today is actually contained on P46. And again, very interesting. Uh, ancient manuscripts, again, are a great way to remind ourselves that our Bible is accurate. And I know sometimes people challenge that and, and disagree with that. But those are people that usually, honestly, just don't know the truth of uh, ma the manuscript evidence. Anyways. Without talking about that too much, just thought that was an interesting thing to share with you. Hopefully you found it interesting as well. We're going to begin looking at this great passage, this great text. This is one of the great texts in Paul's writings. And so as we begin to look at this text, Paul packs verses 3 through 14 with verses of praise, verses of thanksgiving. And so why does he do this? Well, first of all, in the very first verse, verse 3 you see what we call the doxology, and that's why we're, that's what we're actually studying today is going to be the doxology. And then we're going to ask the question, why does Paul uh, praise God here? So doxa, doxology, doxa means to, to give praise, to give glory. Uh, logos is a word, so a doxology is a, is a word of glory, a word of praise given to God. So why does Paul issue this doxology? Well, you see he begins it here with this word, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So here's kind of this beginning praise. Well, why does he do that? So he begins with praise, come down to the very end of it, and you'll notice here in verse 14, if my screen will move, he finishes it with praise as well. Not My computer's not working with me here. To the praise of his glory. And so here we have, again, to the praise of his glory. Here's that word doxa, doxology. So we have this beginning and end. In, in verses one and three through fourteen of Ephesians, we have this this bookends. This this piece of manuscript, this piece of text, is bookended with praise. And then also in the midst of this, he praises God two more times. Look at what it says here in verse six: "To the praise of His glorious grace." To the praise of His glorious grace. Look at verse uh, twelve. So that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. So in this text, the Apostle Paul packs four different uh, words of praise, words of thanksgiving to God the Father. And so again, why is this passage so packed with praise? I think that's a, a question that we need to begin with. Well, the answer is, why is it so packed with praise? Because in verses 3 through 14, Paul really encapsulates the gospel. And so this is a wonderful passage, wonderful text uh, that breaks down the gospel in, an, in, an, in a way that is uh, very interesting. And so Paul's going to do this, look at this gospel. He's going to do so really through uh, a, a use of prepositional phrases. And so we're going to see he's going to use these prepositional phrases. And again, what is a preposition? A preposition, uh, we look at it in English language, what can I do with the box? I can be in the box, with the box, through the box, on top of the box, whatever. Prepositional phrases show a relationship between two things. In this case, it shows a relationship with me in the box, right? I'm on top of the box. I'm in the box. I'm going through the box. And so prepositions show relationship. The Apostle Paul uses them as a, as a figure of speech uh, as well. So we'll see how he does this beginning in verse 3. So let's back up here and let's begin in our text. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So again, here's this beginning He's praising God. He's praising God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so the question then becomes, okay, why is he praising God? Well, again, to repeat myself, 
He's doing so because in this text, he is encapsulating the gospel. So he's praising God for the gospel. And, and if you pause for a second and you ask the question, well, what is the gospel? Well, the gospel was God's purpose, right? It was God's plan. And so it was, the, uh, it was according to God's will. And so through this text, the Apostle Paul will use this, this word, his will, his purpose, his plan. And that's what the gospel is. The gospel was God's plan. And what, what we're going to see is that God's plan, God's purpose, was ultimately fulfilled through Jesus Christ. So as we go through this text, we're going to notice some of these things. So again, let's go back to the opening verse here. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. And here's the prepositional phrase. He's blessed us in Christ. And so here we have this preposition in. And so we're going to notice all of these prepositional phrases as they relate to Jesus Christ. And so this Paul uses the word in, and actually it's really simple because in the Greek it's almost the exact same. Uh, it, it sounds, it's in, it's right? In, in. So he has blessed us in Christ. With what? What has he blessed us in Christ? Every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. So every spiritual blessing that God has given us, here's the location idea, right? This aspect of a location. Some people have said it's a container image. Whatever the case, this figure of speech, Paul is using a preposition uh, to highlight that for us. All of these spiritual blessings are in Christ. So we take note of that. And so then we come to verse 4. Even as he, talking about God, God chose us. So again, this is God's purpose, God's plan, God's will, God's choice. And again, this is the gospel was God's plan to save humanity. And God's plan was fulfilled through Christ. I don't want to keep beating the same point, but I want you to keep seeing how Paul threads that point through here, though. Verse 4, even as God chose us in him. So God chose us in Christ Jesus. It says, well, when did he do this? Before the foundation of the world. So God chose us to do what? To be what? To be holy and blameless before him. God chose that if we are in Christ Jesus, and I, I think this is such an amazing thought, God chose that if we were in Christ Jesus, we would be able to stand before God the Father holy and blameless. He chose to make us holy and blameless in that manner. In Jesus Christ, he chose to make us holy and blameless. So again, we have that preposition. Chose in him to be what? Holy and blameless. We continue and we look at some of these prepositions again. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. Let's pause for a second and talk about this, this verse. So in love, he predestined us for adoption. Um, well, what does this mean, predestined? I know that a lot of people in the religious world um, believe that God predestined some people for a good relationship and predestined some for a bad, predestined some for heaven and predestined some for hell. That's not what this passage teaches. It's not what predestination is. Predestination is the choice of God to save us how he wanted to save us. God predestined the plan. God predestined that those who are in Christ Jesus will be his uh, will be blessed with every spiritual blessing. God predestined that those in Christ Jesus would stand before him holy and blameless. God predestined that those in Christ Jesus would be adopted as sons. So the predestination is God's plan. We choose to be a part of that plan or we choose to not be. But here we see this again in love he predestined us for adoption. Well, here we have a different preposition it's not in, it's a, it's a preposition through. And this preposition occurs twice here in this, in this text we're looking at today, and both times it's an interesting preposition as well. We are, pre, we are predestined for adoption to God because of love, right? In love, he predestined us to be adopted. How was this adoption, how did this adoption take place? Through Jesus Christ. Here again, we have that same preposition, verse 7, in him we have redemption. So the redemption, how did redemption get, uh, how were we redeemed? How are we bought? How are we purchased? Here was, the, here was the price of that redemption, through his blood. So we are adopted. So here are these two prepositions real quick. I'm sorry, this preposition twice real quickly. We are adopted through Christ Jesus. 
to be sons of God. We have redemption through the blood of Christ. So that preposition occurs twice in verses 3 through 14. Um, so let's get back here. Um, so verse, let's get back to verse 5. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. Right? So again, we are predestined according to his purpose, according to his will. Verse 6. Here's this praise. Once again, we, it, verse 3 begins with praise. Here again in verse 6 we have a passage of praise. To the praise of his glorious grace with which he blessed us in. So here's that preposition again. We are blessed in the beloved. Well, who's the beloved? What's the beloved? The beloved is Jesus Christ. So we are blessed, and this is very similar to verse three, uh, Sorry, verse 3. Every spiritual blessing is in Christ Jesus. Here we have, we are blessed in the beloved. He continues in verse 7 with this same preposition, the same figure of speech, this idea of a location or a container, right? In him, in Jesus, we have redemption. We already looked at the preposition through, but we see again, we have redemption in him. Well, how was this redemption in him accomplished? The redemption in him was accomplished through his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses. Redemption, the forgiveness, according to the rich of his, his grace, which he, this is an interesting word, he lavished upon us. This word means to give in an abundance. He, he gave us these things in an abundance. The riches of his grace he gave us abundantly. And he did so in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will. So again, here we have this aspect of his will, his purpose, his plan. It was a mystery. The Old Testament prophets didn't understand it. Uh, the apostles of Christ didn't understand it. It was a mystery. Paul talks about the mystery frequently. The mystery uh, is, is part of that mystery is, is the gospel. Now, certain aspects Paul will highlight specifically, for example, the mystery that the Gentiles were going to be included in the plan, the gospel. But he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose. Right? Again, this is God's purpose, God's plan, God's mystery, God's will, which he set forth. Here's that preposition again. His purpose, his plan, was set forth in Christ Jesus. You see, Christ was his purpose. Christ was his plan. As And he, can, he continues again in verse 10. It was a plan for the fullness of time. That takes us all the way back here uh, to verse 4. It was before the foundation of the world. It was a plan for the fullness of time. What was the purpose of the plan? To unite all things in him. So here's that preposition again. All things are united in him. Things in heaven and things on earth. Verse 11, we have that preposition again. In him, in Christ, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose. Here's that purpose word again. Purpose, plan, will, according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we so here in verse 12, Paul talks about Jews because they were the first to look forward to look forward to a Messiah. They were the first to want this relationship so that we, the Jews, who were first to hope in Christ, might be, here's a praise verse again, to the praise of his glory. Here's a preposition phrase again. In him you. So who's the you? If we as Jews, the you is the Gentiles. In him you Gentiles. When you heard the word of truth, the gospel, right? See, the, the inclusion of the Gentiles was a mystery, verse 9. In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and you believed in him, what happened when the Gentiles believed in him? They were sealed, we were sealed, with the promised Holy Spirit. This is an interesting word, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, so the Holy Spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance. This word can also be translated as a down payment, something that is given to make sure that we have what we said. What, sorry, it makes sure that we have what has been promised to us. He is the, the guarantee. He is the down payment. He holds it for us. He is the guarantee. And that word, I have another definition for you. I want to just kind of read it to you. I want to read specifically from the, from the lexicon BDAG. This word, talking about this word guarantee, it secures a legal claim to the article in question. It makes a contract valid. It is a payment. Now listen to this. 
It is a payment that obligates the contracting party to make further payments. So the Holy Spirit is the first payment, meaning he is the first thing that's given to us. He's holding that inheritance for us, but there is more to come. But he holds our inheritance for us. Who is, who is the Holy Spirit holding this inheritance for? To those who believe in Christ Jesus. To those who are in Christ Jesus. And so then in verse 14, we once again have this praise. To the praise of his glory. So all through this passage of scripture, all through this text, we keep having these prepositional phrases. I am certainly no, uh, I am not good at uh, graphics or anything like this. So this is about as good as I can come up with. So, uh, but look at this. In Christ Jesus. See my little circle? That represents Christ. See, that's pretty good, huh? So in Christ, every spiritual blessing, verse 3. In Christ, we are chosen to be blameless and holy. We are chosen to be these things in Jesus Christ. We can stand in the presence of God, holy and blameless. Why? Because that was God's plan, that we would be holy and blameless in Christ. What a plan. Uh, his will, his purpose is in Christ. And I put two verses up here, but certainly there are more verses in that text that allude to his purpose, his will being in Christ. We have redemption in Christ, verse 7. We are united. There's, there's this unifying aspect of being in Christ, right? We have an inheritance in Christ. And then the other preposition that we noticed as well that occurred twice, through Christ. We're adopted as sons. We have redemption through his blood. And what does that mean? Paul then says the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins. We're redeemed. We're bought through his blood. And then the result of being in him is we are sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee, the down payment of our inheritance. This word down payment is only used three times in the New Testament. Paul uses it uh, again in 2 Corinthians 1 and in 2 Corinthians 5. The Holy Spirit is the down payment of a new body. He's a down payment that we're not going to walk around in this body anymore. He's a down payment that we're going to be uh, given a new body, a new inheritance. We're going to be given something greater. And who is this down payment? Who, who, who is it in? It's in Christ Jesus. In, those who are in Christ receive this guarantee from the Holy Spirit. So why? what is the purpose of this doxology here in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3? It is praising God for our deliverance. It is praising God for the work that He has done in Christ Jesus. It is praising God that in Christ, we have all of these wonderful things. It is an encapsulation of the gospel. What a beautiful text. What a beautiful and powerful passage of scripture this is. I hope this study, is, this look at this text has been interesting to you. I hope it blesses you and I hope it reminds you of the wonderful things that we have in Christ Jesus. The question then really is this. Are you in Christ Jesus? Have you been baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of your sins? Acts 2.38. Have you made that choice? If not, why not? You have a good day and God bless.